This is Walt Disney Donald Duck from Whitman and it's sold for 40 cents. And it is from September 1979, published monthly by Western Publishing Company, Inc. in Poughkeepsie, New York. Let's see. Sorry, I'm just trying to get things straight. Okay. Um, on the inside cover, there's an advertisement saying how we saved the universe with our banana talkies and got back to tell about it with our banana compasses. We were on patrol when the spaceship landed. My partner and I split up to get a coaster look. But before I knew it, I was captured by hostile aliens. I have just one request before you disintegrate me, I said. Can I finish my lunch? I calmly pulled out my banana talkie. It's a real walkie-talkie, but it looks like a Chiquita banana. Secretly, I beeped out our coordinates on the hidden Morse code button. Meanwhile, my partner used the banana compass to send help in our direction. Thanks to Chiquita bananas and some quick thinking, the invasion was stopped, and the universe is once again safe from evil. <laughs> <coughs> and there's the order form. It was um, the walkie-talkie set was thirteen ninety-five, and then the compasses were two dollars and fifty cents. Okay, the first story is Donald Duck and the Prankish Pirates. Land ho! Port your starboard. Here are those seeds you wanted, Donald. Thank you, Daisy. When I get this ground spaded, I'm gonna have the biggest garden in Duckville, and this section is just for you. And the sign says daisies. Isn't that sweet? But digging up all that ground is going to be a lot of hard work. Oh, I don't mind because I'm not going to do it. I'm going to trick the kids into spading my garden. I doubt that. You've never been able to trick those little Dickinsons yet. This time I will. I've got a plan. I'll bet it backfires just like all the rest. And Donald says, not this one. I worked it out too carefully. First, I bought them a pirate book. Then some pirate hats and swords. And while they're up in that crow's nest playing Captain Kid, yes, never mind. You just come by early tomorrow morning, and if my entire garden isn't spaded, I'll mow your lawn for a month and eat all the grass besides. All right, good luck, Donald, and I leave you with one word. Moo. And so Donald thinks, this has got to work. I've planned this too long to fail now. There, all the incriminating evidence is removed. Now to plant an alibi. And Donald says, I'm going to take a nap, kids. Okay, Uncle Donald, we'll be out here playing pirates. And then Donald says, they didn't suspect a thing. Let's see. The part I want dug up is about 30 paces from the big tree. And so um, he's writing it out, but he's got a map. Big tree, little tree, treasure buried here. And then he's got north, south, east, west. And it says, mark off 30 paces from the big tree, turn left, facing the little tree, North by north, east. And then he's still writing. There, now to brown the edges and give it that old Captain Kid look. And now to plant it in the hollow of the big tree. And let it stick out just enough so the kids won't notice. Cheek. Chomp. Oh, doggone that pesky chipmunk. He's going to spoil everything. So the chipmunk has the map now. Ahoy, mate. Strange craft aboard. Quick, after it. There he goes, into the hollow of the tree. There he is again, poking his head out. He had something in his mouth. He dropped it. And Donald's thinking, happy days. He's got his head in the hedge there. Now to get back to the house and pretend I'm napping before they come racing in with the good news. Soon. And you say a chipmunk found this? In the hollow of the big tree. Amazing. It looks like a pirate map. Is it real, Uncle Donald? And then here's an advertisement of the friendly ghost Casper and the boot keepers. My records show Ghostly has fallen way down in his quota of booze this month. He was our best booer. We better find out what happened. Ghostly, you haven't filled your quota of booze lately. You know we ghosts have a reputation to keep up. And Casper says, glad to hear it, Ghostly. I feel more like hoorraying than booing. What caused this awful change in you? Hostess fruit pies. Every time I eat one, I shout hooray. Ridiculous. Ghosts are supposed to boo. Why not taste one and see what happens? Delicious real fruit filling, hooray for hostess apple pie. Tender crust, hooray for hostess cherry pie. Hooray. Why boo when you can hooray for hostess fruit pies? And Casper says, hooray. And then there's a cherry fruit pie and an apple fruit pie. You get a big delight in every bite of hostess fruit pies. 
Okay, now back to the story. It must be. See, there's a sign by Captain Kidd himself. Gee, that means there's pirate treasure right here in our own backyard. Come on, Uncle Donald, let's follow the directions and start digging. I haven't finished my nap yet, kids. You go ahead. Whatever you find, you can keep. Oh, boy. Come on, mates. Let's go. It worked. And now to call Daisy and prove that I can outsmart those kids sometimes. Are you sure we followed the map right? I did it three times. It always comes out the same. Okay, let's start digging. And Donald's on the phone. You should see them, Daisy. They're out there right now digging like eager beavers. It's hard to believe, but the bet isn't over until they finish the job. They may catch on yet. Not a chance. That fake map, I fooled them completely. Not only am I getting my garden spade, but I'm having the most fun I've had in years. Uh-oh, someone's overhearing. <laughs> so that's his game. It's a good thing I came in for a pitcher of ice water. To belay the digging, mates. Abandoned ship. We've been scuttled. What happened? Buzz, buzz, mumble, buzz. Aren't they cute? Now they're having a meeting to decide where to dig next. Heh, if only they knew. We can't make them walk the plank. We haven't got a plank. Let's get one. No, I've got a better idea. We can teach Uncle Donald a lesson and at the same time get something we've always wanted. What do you mean? Well, you two pretend to keep digging while I sneak over to Uncle Scrooge's house and borrow some bzz, bzz, bzz. That's a swell idea. I'll be back before dark, mates. And when Uncle Donald calls us in, we spring our little surprise. Good luck, Captain. Kids, it's getting late. Time to wash up. This is later. Uh-oh, some of this is marked out. I can't see what it says. We better stall him. Come on now, it's almost 8 o'clock. I know, Uncle Donald, but we want to dig for more treasure. Good, or I mean, I know this ground is just full of buried treasure, but I'll wake you up or real early in the morning. And where's Louie? Oh, or Louie? Well, he's our... Right here, Uncle Donald, I was just gathering our day's diggings. Oh, well, careful, those rocks look heavy. Those aren't rocks in there, Uncle Donald. They're doubloons. Oh, doubloons? Sure, sure, of course. Well, let's go up and count them, mates, while we get ready for bed. Aye, aye, Captain. Boy, what an imagination kids have. You kids be sure to wash behind the ears. I'll be up later to check up. While they're up there, I'll put some of my seeds and get my garden started. They'll probably get up at dawn and spade up the other half. Won't Daisy be surprised when she comes over in the morning? Meanwhile, wow, look at that pile of gold doubloons. It sure was nice of Uncle Scrooge to lend them to us. Let's not lose any. He's got every one counted. All right, mates, battle stations. Here comes Uncle Donald. Now to get those kids tucked into bed. They'll need plenty of rest if they're going to finish spading my garden for me. 15 gold doubloons, clink. 16 gold doubloons, clink. Still paying pirates, isn't that cute? 17 gold doubloons, 18 gold doubloons, clink. Oh, hi, Uncle Donald, come on in. You can help us count. Are these, I mean those, I mean they shine like real, but how could we just dug where the map said, Uncle Donald, and they were there. Oh, and there they were. Handfuls of them. Do you know what this means? We're rich, rich. Not we, Uncle Donald, us. You said all we find we could keep. But if you'd like to dig up your own tomorrow, it's okay with us. Thanks, kids. You'll never regret this. Now let's all get to bed so we can get an early start tomorrow. Okay, pleasant dreams, Uncle Donald. But it's no use. I can't sleep. Every time I try to count sheep, they turn into gold doubloons. I know this is a dirty trick, starting without them, but I can't wait. Pirate treasure, here I come. Yo ho ho and a dig a dig a dig. Tee hee hee. And they're watching him out in the yard. And there's an advertisement for grit. Um, remember how many times you felt left out because you were broke? Places the gang was going and you weren't included. They all have money for movies, games, hamburgers, and soft drinks. All of them except you. Well, you'll never be left out again. Now you can make $5, $10 or more week after week. America's greatest newspaper, family newspaper since 1882. And then there's an order form for super iron-ons, only $1 each or three for $2.50. Full color transfers onto your own favorite t-shirt or garment. Just ask mom to help you iron. There's Grizzly Adams, Sean, Cassidy, Jacket, Dallas Cheer, Christy McNichol, Warm and Lovable, Turkey's Need, Kiss Action, Kid for Rent, and A Great Kitten. Now back to the story. Next morning. Good morning, Uncle Donald. 
Here we are, bright and early. We're ready to start digging anytime you are. Kids, I have a confession to make. I didn't wait for you. I started last night. You did? Tee Oh, Uncle Donald, you should be ashamed. Don't be angry, kids. There wasn't one doubloon out there, and I dug up the whole area. Wow, my poor garden. The only thing I can grow down there now is step ladders. But I deserve this, kids. I guess it's time you knew the truth. The pirate map was a fake. I made it myself. We'll confess, too. We didn't find these doubloons. We borrowed them from Uncle Scrooge to teach you a lesson. You mean you kids knew all the time? Yes, Louie heard you talking to Daisy on the phone while we... Daisy, when she finds out this trick backfired, I'll have to mow her lawn for a month, gasped. Don't worry, Uncle Donald, we won't tell her if you'll do us a favor, too. Anything, kids, just name it. Well, all you have to do is bzz, bzz, and bzz, bzz, later. Ahoy, land a starboard. It certainly was nice of you, Donald, to sacrifice your garden to make the children a swimming pool. Well, they're such sweet kids, and I felt so guilty playing that pirate map trick on them. I just had to make it up to them somehow. So they've got their swimming pool. The next story is Donald Duck and follow the, lead, the reader. Aha, just as I suspected, watching television again. What's the matter with that? This is an exciting program. You call that excitement, watching others perform feats of daring and skill? Why, anyone knows that it's much more thrilling to participate in an activity yourself. Sure it is, but what are we supposed to do? Go to Africa and hunt lions like the guys on television? Not at all, boys. I have something which will provide us with the thrills of the lion hunt and the tension of a hockey match, all rolled into one. Gosh, let's see it. There you are, boys. Are you kidding? A croquet set? That's a dull game. And the box says Little Dandy Croquet Set. So here's some advertisements. Uh, Snippies be the very first to own fabulous cartoon scissors. Stainless steel blades, rounded safety edges, brightly hand-painted, non-toxic, sturdy construction made to last. And there's Tweety, Roadrunner, Daffy Duck, Woody Woodpecker, Porky Pig, and Bugs Bunny. And they're $1.25 each or any two scissors for $2. Postage and handling, 50 cents. And an advertisement for Hubba Bubba, gum fighting practicing techniques. Gum fighting through history. Ever since the dawn of bubble gum, man has engaged in gum fighting. But simply gum fighting is head to head, face to face, nose to nose, bubble to bubble, where the biggest bubble takes all. Sounds simple? Not so fast. Even top gum fighters ended up in some pretty sticky situations. All bubble gums are not look like. Gum fight practice drill. <laughs> Begin blowing bubble. You'll note the Hubba Bubba's amazing formula lets you blow an incredibly large bubble. When the Hubba Bubba breaks, do not be alarmed. Hubba Bubba is not your ordinary bubble gum. Simply remove Hubba Bubba from your face. That's right. Simply remove and replace in mouth. Return to step one. Okay, now back to the story. Don't scoff, boys. I've always found croquet a very exciting game. I wonder what he thinks of dominoes. In fact, I was champ of our grammar school for two whole years. It's still a dull game as far as I'm concerned. Me too, but the sooner we finish, the sooner we get back to the television set. Check. Let's get started right away, Uncle Donald. I knew you'd change your minds once the game was actually set up. Okay, boys, here are your mallets. Exciting game, huh, kids? Great. Terrific. Now you'll get a chance to see the shot that won me my championship. Here goes your ball, Dewey. Smack. Pow. Whoosh. Crash. Oh, oh, it broke a window. Gosh, now what'll we do? Tut, tut, boys. All part of the normal excitement of croquet. We we'll merely go over and pay Professor Teakwood for the window, and then we can get back to our game. Oh, boy, that's really exciting. Huh? We'll get a chance to see Professor Teakwood's collection of souvenirs from all over the globe. Gee, you're right. I'll bet he's got some real valuable stuff in there. Excuse me, Professor, but it seems like our croquet ball. Did the ball land in here? Whew. No, it didn't, but it landed in my den and knocked over the cage of my most valuable parrot in the world. I think Uncle Donald was right. Croquet can be an exciting game. He's the only parrot in the world who can read as well as speak. He's worth thousands. Thousands? Oh, no, he got away. Fortunately not. I was cleaning his cage at the time and removed him to another room. Croquet isn't so exciting after all. Maybe not for you, but I've had enough. I'm sorry we broke your window, Professor, but this should pay for having it fixed. Let's go home, boys, and have a nice, quiet game of checkers. No, wait. 
How do you do, gentlemen? Fine, thank you. Huh? Stop him. Don't let him get away. I've reconsidered croquet is an exciting game. It'll be nerve-wracking game if that parrot gets away. Too late. He flew away. No, he's much too old to fly. He must have jumped down into the yard. Here's advertisement for sea monkeys. Only a dollar twenty-five plus postage. Enter the wonderful world of amazing live sea monkeys. The real life fun pets you grow yourself. And then back to the story. Don't worry, Professor. He couldn't can't have gone too far. Hurry up. He's a fast walker. I wish a parrot could fly. Yeah, you lot easier to spot up in the air. Gosh, I'm afraid he's not in the yard at all. Where do you think he went, Professor? The only part of the city he knows is the area around Duckburg Harbor. I take him down there quite often to see the ships. Just sit tight, Professor. We'll find him. I hope so. I'd hate to miss out on my nightly chess game. Question mark. The professor's right. That bird may be an honor graduate, but I'll bet there's a lot of the old sea dog left in him. But since he can't fly, we can drive faster than he can walk. All we have to do is drive along the shortest route to Duckburg Harbor and we'll overtake him. But what if he goes another way? We can still get there before he does. We'll just wait for him. He's as good as home already. And for a while there, I thought croquet was going to be an exciting game. Gosh, I hope he watches out for traffic as he walks along. Yeah, I never thought of that. Hey, let's go. Up there. What do you suppose it is, Uncle Donald? I'm sure going to find out. Maybe it's a parade. Why, it's him. What luck. Grab him, boys. Don't let him get away again. Oh, no, he sees us following him. He's trying to hide in that pet shop. For a smart parrot, that was a pretty dumb move. It'll be cinch to spot him in there. Pardon me, sir, but we're looking for our parrot. You've come to the right place, boy. I have five beautiful parrots for sale. No, I mean we're... And they all talk, too. Talking parrots, $50 each. Oh, no, there are six parrots there. He's mixed in with the others. And they all look alike, too. Now what, Uncle Donald? It's a cinch. We can't buy them all. Tut, tut, boys. Our parrot has spent a lot of time at sea, right? Yes, but then watch this. There she blows. Man the harpoons, you swabs. Ye cats, I don't understand. That won't work, Uncle Donald. I guess all parrots have gone to sea. You're right, boys. We'll have to try something else. That parrot thinks he can outsmart me, does he? I'll prove that the pen is mightier than the, than the parrot. Question mark, question mark. Um, okay, so there's, there's a problem here. Part of it's marked out. Thought so. You're... And so he's got a sign that says, or paper, it says your wildcat has escaped from his cage. You see, none of the other birds could, it probably says read that paper. Um, I don't understand. That proves that Uncle Donald is as smart as a parrot. Smarter even. Step on it, boys. We still have to catch him. Let's go. We don't want to lose sight of him again. Oh no, there he goes on that truck. What bad luck. Good luck. At least we know for sure he's on his way to the harbor. We'll get the car and drive down there. Drive right down there. That bird is as slippery as a fish, but as a fish out of water and twice as smart. And then there's a sign on, well, on the fence. It's written Duckburg Harbor and it has an arrow shortly. Wow. Ye cats, boy, look at all the ships. I don't see them on the dock anywhere. Gosh, I'll bet he's already gone on board one of those ships. Sure, he's probably homesick for the sight of coconuts and things from his native land. The only thing we can do is ask the captain of the ships. Captains of the ships. Oh no, that'll t that that'll take hours. We couldn't get through till next week. Wait a minute, boys. The ships are all marked, so we only have to check the ones that come from the same place as parrots do. So there's one that says SS Rangoon, India. There's one that says SS Ivory Queen, Africa, and that would be South America, of course. Africa, India. No, wait a minute. I think parrots come from the West Indies, the East Indies. Swell. We're right back where we started from. Oh, no, we're not. We don't have to search the ships from the North Pole. Hey, boys, look, we're in luck. Duckburg Public Library. The public library has a branch down here for the off-duty sailors. So what? They probably have one at the railroad station for off-duty engineers, too. All we have to do is find a book about parrots, and it'll tell us where they come from. Okay, here's an advertisement for Fun Factory. Super Gifts and Gimmicks. They've got uh, talking teeth, sweat action comb, snake nut can, snappers, atomic mini pistol, loudest bang, secret agent pen, bag of laughs, phony arm cast, buggy ice cubes, joy buzzer, disappearing ink, stink loads, exploding pen, red hot pepper gum, whoopee cushion, snap, 
and chewing gum, sneezing powder, and then other stuff too. And um, then there's an advertisement for Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Journey five centuries into the future and prepare yourself for danger and excitement. Now you can follow his adventures in Gold Key Comics or as a giant movie classic or as a Whitman bagged set of three, beginning with a film and traveling way beyond new and different excitement each issue. Be there with Buck Rogers in the 25th century. On sale now. Okay, back to the story. That way we'll only have to search one or two ships instead of all of them. Great. And there's a sign that says quiet public library. Parrots, that would be under P. Follow me, boys. Here we are. Hey, Uncle Donald, look. Uh-oh. And the parrots in the library reading. You pull the book away and distract his attention. I'll grab him from behind. Check. Hands off, you swabs. Missed. Quiet. Man the belaying pins. Come here, you slippery scholar. Quiet. Quiet. Well, at least we got the parrot. Oof. <laughs> they got thrown out. Shortly. Thanks for getting the parrot back in time for our nightly chess game, boys. I guess his little walk didn't hurt him any. He's won two games in a row. Yes, he loves to play, but he usually loses. The fresh air must have sharpened his wits. I guess so. Well, let's go home, kids. First, we have to go back to the library, Uncle Donald. The library? What for? In the excitement, I care with the book the parrot was reading. And the book is How to Win at Chess. Oh, no, that explains why he ran away in the first place. And we didn't have to chase him at all. He'd have come home himself after he finished the book. <coughs> Later. Sometimes I just don't understand Uncle Donald. Me either. After all that talk about, our partic about us participating in outdoor sports, all he wants to do lately is watch television. And they're standing there with the croquet mallets. And here's an order form for 204-piece Revolutionary, Revolutionary War Soldier set for $2.50. And then an advertisement for Olympic Sales Club. Earn famous name prizes or earn $1 a box cash. Sell cards and gifts from free sample book. And the back cover is Sales Leadership Club. Join the leader SLC super prizes or cash. And here's the cover again. Thanks for watching.